All right, up next is a dual CS607. And I, uh, full disclosure, I did kind of a pre evaluation of this one just because when I got this turntable, the cartridge was broken. Right, the cartridge is, I think the cartridge is broken. Anyway, I mean, I can kind of get it to stay a little bit, but doesn't want to stay very well. My phone is absolutely blowing up, so I'm going to, jeez, just stop. Stop with the texting today. I have to put my phone in the house. Um, so, and, and I don't like the proprietary head shells where you are obligated to go with, right, the manufacturer's stylus and cartridge. So what I did is I, I talked to the owner, uh, one of the shops, and said, okay, this is broken, so let's order an adapter. So we'll have a standard half-inch adapter that I purchased from, I think it's PL Audio off of eBay. Yeah, PL Audio. No affiliation. I don't get anything. for. So if it, if it works great and it's easy to put on, awesome advertisement for them. If it doesn't work or it's a pain in the butt to put on, not a good advertisement for them. Oh my gosh, my phone is ridiculous today. <sighs> okay. I'm going to pause this real quick and get rid of my phone. because It's not that I don't like text messages, but I don't like getting 30 of them once I start shooting a video, which seems to kind of be the pattern. Now, The first thing I'm going to do, and, I, and again, I, full disclosure, I did a pre-evaluation of this turntable. And, um, you know, before we get to that, let's just kind of look at what's going on. I can't, actually, I was able to test for sound. I got sound out of both channels now that I think about it from this one. Um, I think the speed was a little erratic. So the speed adjustment pots need to be fixed. Um, the lift arm doesn't seem to work. So right now it's, it should be in the up position, right? So the elevator's not working. It's kind of stuck in that position. I don't know, let me move this so you can see. My camera for some reason has shifted its angle here. Let's see if I can get this a little bit better. There we go. So this has a lift. Right, so there's down, there's up. So it should be in the up position, but it is not. So I have to see if that can be remedied. Um, all right, so if I put this, if I can kill the lights, if we can see the strobe. 60 hertz, 33. Oh, it's actually, the speed looks good on 33. I mean, I'll, I'll clean this pot anyway, but, and it looks good on, looks good on 45 too. It's not really even floating, so that is, that is good news. Let me just have it slow down to 33. Yeah, so that's good. Maybe a duel that I will luck out on, except for this, whatever's going on with that tone arm elevator. Um, I'll do a basic kind of service on this, clean it up, get this platter off. I think this platter just pops off. Oh, oh man. I think it comes off. There we go. Oh, and this is, um, you know what, I'm going to put this platter back on. This is auto return. So let me, I think this is auto return. Oh, maybe it's, maybe it's not. Let's see. Made in Germany. There's a gear in there, so I'm assuming it's auto return, but let's see what's going on. All right, so let's start it. And it might not be. I don't, I'll have to look. 
Oh, I hear something. Oop, and it's dragging right across the, yep, dragging right across the platter. So it is auto return, but it is not uh, lifting the arm up. So we have some kind of issue we need to address underneath there. Grab my Lazy Susan for the turntable. And see about taking this apart. Have not worked on one of these before. So going in um, without any experience on how this is actually going to be disassembled. Looks like they have a lot of screws. And this is going to be boring to watch me take out 17 screws on this, so uh, let, me, uh, let me cut to where I have the bottom off. Not 17 screws, we had 10 screws. So that's still quite a few. All right, so let's see what's going on with this elevator. And see if we can make some sense out of it. Um, Okay, so there it's, I think it's supposed to rest in that center position. And I really just kind of, <laughs> I didn't do anything to, to change anything there. So what is that supposed to do? Is that supposed to... It appears as though... This is, uh, looks like it's kind of a complicated mechanism here. All right, well, this is going to be boring watching me stare at this and try to figure out how it works. I'm going to see if I can pull up a service manual and get any information on this mechanism because this is foreign to me. So um, I'll just kind of jump back in uh, when I figure something out. Well, the instructions in the service manual are all in German. And uh, guess who does not speak German or read German? But I think I have uh, identified the issue, at least what I what I think should be happening. Now, number one, I, I can't make heads or tails of the service manual. I've looked at a couple of different pictures, but this, when I press the button here, the button here to raise the tone arm, um, this little gear here will push the end of this lever up, right? And I believe what's supposed to happen is the this lever is supposed to pivot at this point here and push, right, push this down. In fact, we'll, be, we'll be pushing it up from the other side and raise the tone arm, right? So it's kind of like there's a pivot point in the middle. So push down on this through the button and it raises the other end. If you can see, this is really loose. So there's no, there's nothing holding this down into a position where I believe if, if this were held more tightly here, when I, maybe not, that doesn't seem to be, yeah, well, it seems to be moving in a little bit, but it's also locked into position up here, so let's, so I don't, I don't know if this is just too, is it too stiff here, um, I'm not sure, I'm going to take this off though, and see if I can determine anything about this lever or the components. I mean, it doesn't appear as though anything is broken. This is what it pushes on. There's not, there's not a lot of resistance there. I mean, well, maybe. Um,
Yeah, and this is um, this has got a lot of silicone. I wonder if. Because it's actually coming back up just super slowly, like probably a lot slower than it should. But I, I honestly have no idea. Again, the service manual is not exactly useful when it's written in German and I don't speak German. And, I, and I'm curious as to what this cutout is here for. But again, that raises the tone arm. Right, so right there, the tone arm is off of the off of the board. When I look at the service manual image, yeah, it doesn't show that there's anything anything extra that should be there. Um, Although there's another fuse somewhere. So there's a fuse here. And there's an image that shows another fuse somewhere. But I don't. I don't know where that other fuse would be. And nothing looks like the. Nothing looks like the picture that they have in the manual. So. This will be filed in the wild goose key, uh, chase category in terms of repairing it because I have no idea if I'll be able to get this working or not because I may have to do a little more research on this because that's, that's where it goes. Now, unless, is that, sorry, and I hate to do this off camera, um, the images don't really show, well, I guess it does show alignment there, I don't know. I, I'm going to sound like a broken record, <laughs> or in this this case, a broken dual turntable. But I hate these things, and this is precisely the reason why I hate these things. Just I don't know why they're engineered the way they are. It looks like a washer is missing, um, because the clip came off. And there was no washer there. I may have a small washer I can use. Um, to create a little bit of space there, but I don't know for sure. I mean, I've got washers. Would a washer prevent that from working, possibly? So that's a big washer, but let's see if that changes the behavior at all. All right. So that's in position, and that's no change at all. See how it's raising it up? It's not. It's it's not pivoting. It's not pivoting there. So let's do another spacer. See if that changes anything. Um, I really don't want to use that one. It's kind of corroded. But just to see what happens, I'll put this one underneath. So what I'm trying to do is I want to make sure that's tight in there to see if that changes how that works. Oh, son of a gun. The damn clip was stuck to my finger and fell in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. 
Can you can you hear the frustration mounting with another dual turntable? I don't know of any other turntable brand that gives me more headaches than these. And I just can't get away from them. They just keep coming. They're like zombies. The dual turntable horde keeps coming after me. I think that maybe did it. That may have uh, solved that problem. So let me throw the base back on. The bottom of the base back on and see if that did anything. So up, down. Um, I'm not sure if that would actually make contact with a record though. So let me see. I'll give it a test run with this broken stylus. Oops, let me make sure I got this in the frame. Oh, yep, I do. So I'm not sure how, if, if it's missing a part, I'm not sure how the part would be, would be missing. Um, so there's up, oh it's super high, but let's see if I, whoa, all right. All right, so I'm not sure if I can adjust that or not, but it's, gosh, it's like an inch off of the, it's like an inch off of the record. Hopefully I can adjust, oh I can, there's an adjuster screw right there. So let's go down. All right. So this is the adjuster screw, and you can just turn it by hand. So let's raise that up. Perfect. That is like just a just slightly over a quarter inch off of the platter. Okay. Again, the stylus is bad. So, and this is a really crappy record, so I'm okay with it doing that. Sweet. All right. And it stays locked in the up position. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. So that's good. That's good news. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull this out. This is. This doesn't appear to be all that bad. Like I don't feel a lot of resistance, <laughs> and it's seated in that motor. So I'm going to. Say that. Uh, let me check the service manual. I don't believe I can get into that. I went through the service manual quickly, and it does not appear as though. Yeah, there's. Uh, I'm not going to take that motor apart. I'd, I'd have to completely disassemble this motor to lube it, so I'm not going to do that. It's just going to have to. And it's not bad. I mean, it's not bad at all. So I'm not leaving it in, you know, bad shape or anything. All right, so here is the quarter inch adapter. I assume it probably goes on like this. Tricky thing about this one is I cannot seem to release anything off of it. I think I need to remove it. And this is a tiny, tiny screw. Like my screwdriver is too fat to get a good bite on it. So I'm gonna have to uh, be a little creative with how I do this. I'm gonna pause it, come back and tell you what I did to get that out of there. The screw is out. It was, it's so small, that gap, I had to use a razor blade to remove it. 
But now I can remove the proprietary head shell. So here is kind of how it came. And it looks like someone has tried to glue this. There's like some shiny spots, maybe from some super glue. Have no idea if this is intentional design or not, but I'm not going to replace the stylus with that proprietary um, adapter because I want to be able to put half inch cartridges on here. So first, you know, what I might do first is I think I should mount the cartridge to the adapter first and then put the adapter in. I think that will be easiest. So I'm going to slide the turntable out of the way. Click that in position. I'm putting on an Ortofon. What is this? Omega. Shop had a bunch of these that they had bought once upon a time. So Omega will go on like so. And then I can screw this. I can put this in, clamp it into position, and then screw the um, that little tiny screw back in. It's going to be pretty boring watching me attach this, so I'm going to speed through uh, putting this head shell together. Alright, the uh, new cartridge adapter and cartridge is installed. What I did is I left that little locking screw, I left it um, raised just a little bit because it is such a narrow gap that I don't have a screwdriver that can really get in there. So I'm going to leave it raised a little bit because someone may have to go in with something, either some smaller a smaller bladed screwdriver or like I had to do a razor blade and get in there and get that. So I, I tightened it just enough to where it's snug and there's a little bit of a spot where you can grab it. And it's, it's, so what that screw does is it locks this into position, right? So in order for me to pull this adapter out, again, I need to remove that screw the rest of the way. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to keep this elevated and let's do a sound check and see what we have for sound. This checks out. We will clean it up and get it ready to uh, take to the shop. Alright, so plugged in, volume down, phono's on, whoops, that was loud, sorry, hit the wrong button up here. Alright, so before, we do anything else, there's a bad hum, bad hum on the right channel, so let's make sure that Oh my gosh, that is so small. I mean, that's a it's a real bad hum. It's a real bad hum. And I've got it grounded and all that good stuff. Let's see. I guess the screw has to come all the way out. So all of my cables are connected and they're in the correct spot. And what I want to do is leave that 
screw out and see. All right. So without any head shell, there's no hum. With the head shell, there is hum. I'm going to clean the contacts on the tone arm. And you won't be able to see it, but these, right, these four little posts make contact with the contacts underneath the head shell. So if those are corroded or they're oxidized, it can cause that hum. Um, they look perfectly clean, so who knows what the problem is. Yeah, they're clean. There should not be an issue. Should not be an issue. Let's see. And it's still there. Son of a bitch. Removing the ground wire makes it worse. Oh. Okay. It was a, actually my cables have really shitty adapters on them. Sorry for the language. Really crappy adapters on them. Not, not that that's much better. Um, and it looks like the RCA cables coming from the dual are a little loose. So I believe that is the issue because I have it. Yeah, I need to get a different set of adapter plugs for my setup here because they seem to be a little loose. All right. <clears throat> that damn hum came back to Okay. Test record. Oops. Plug it in. So that new cartridge is definitely taller than the old one. So I need to bring that up. I also need to set tracking because that's way too heavy so Let's see I think this is tracking set that to zero sure what that does. I'll have to look at the service manual and see how to set tracking on this thing. Because this has like an 8 and a 1 and a... so I'm not sure what that does. 13, 14, 15, I have no idea, but I believe this is the actual tracking, yep. So I'm gonna set it for one and a half, that's kind of a safe place to, to set it. I'm not sure what it is on, I'll have to see on the Omega what it's set to, but it, I think it's like one and a half or two. So put this into position, and cycle this once first. 
problem is it wouldn't go down. There we go. Probably just had to cycle it one time. Hey, sweet. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, probably not. Eh, probably not the ideal cartridge for this turntable, but sounds good. Let it cycle. Go all the way back and lock it into position. All right. So what I'm going to do next is um, work on cleaning this up. I'll do a real quick dust cover polish. I'm not going to sand this or anything. I mean, this is just trashed. I'm going to see if I can get it a little bit cleaner. But we'll kind of do, all right, here's the before. And just to get a good look at it. Scratches all over. Beat to, beat to snot. This is all dirty. So what I'll do is I'll do all my standard cleanup stuff. Um, polish the dust cover and then we'll, uh, we'll look at the finished product. So the dust cover's been polished. The, uh, I've cosmetically cleaned it up. I have um, cleaned the speed control pot. Tested it out again. Sounds good. Works good. The dust cover I mean, I got some of the scratches out, but again, I wasn't going to spend a lot of time on this particular turntable. Uh, it looks like the last one of these that sold on eBay. You know, this is like one of those hundred, I don't know, hundred and twenty-five, hundred and fifty dollar turntables, something like that. I need to put that screw back in. I think I didn't lose that. Got to put the screw back in the head shell. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm going to call this one good. Let us reseat this. Sure, why not? Doesn't want to stay in there. Now. There we go. Boy, what a shitty design! I'm telling you. Um, so anyway, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. This one's going off to the shop, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.